Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Going to take a look today at the. Take a look at today. Uh, what my game plan is going into uh, NFP uh, here just in a few hours, 12:30 GMT time. Uh, but before we get into the details, the nitty gritty, the usual. Give yourself 10 or 15, read through the risk disclaimer, and we'll get started. Alrighty, got that out of the way. Uh, before I get started, can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? See my chart? What's going on here? Uh, just give me a, a thumbs up, an OK, an AV, something to let me know that uh, we're all on the same page here. We'll get started. All right, all right. Everything looks good on my end. I'm getting some positive feedback, so we'll get started guessed by looking at the charts what is your predictions <laughs> well uh, good morning Michael good morning Neem all right uh, guess says what are my predictions well so it's NFP right so this is like this is the only number that I day trade when it comes to FX you put me into some index futures and that's a different story but generally speaking the only time that I day trade uh, FX on a number especially uh, is the NFP number right uh, that trade the trade that I, in general has kind of died out a bit uh, as we've had a steady flow of, of NFP data that's you know just basically kind of going one direction for quite some time now uh, earlier in the year, we had a little bit of disruption, if you will, uh, in terms of in terms of we had some some less lesser than expected data, right? From you know the NFP numbers were kind of dipping a little bit, so it created a little bit more volatility. Uh, but it was just kind of a one or two month off type thing, and that's it. It's kind of an aberration. So today we're looking, you know, we're looking for 172k, right? For the economy to have added 172k uh, in September for non-farm payrolls, all right, which would be a little bit of a, an improvement over the August figures. Uh, unemployment rate to remain the same. One of the figures that uh, that the market will be looking at here is average hourly earnings, which is wage inflation. That's something that you know, obviously, inflation is a is something that the market's looking at and looking for a little bit of a an, an uptick here on a year-over-year -year basis. Now, I don't really, I don't really, I don't interpret the data. I don't try to, you know, figure out what's uh, what is what, basically, right? So I don't, I don't try to determine, you know, if this is going to make some dramatic impact on the Fed. And and just to be clear, uh, the the when it comes to trading NFP, it's uh, it's a one-day thing for me. Right, so uh, it's basically you know whatever position that I get on uh, following NFP is is a position that that is almost always liquidated, uh, even by really like the London close. So you know basically like I'd say what one one p.m. GMT time. So you know by the time you get five o'clock hits in London, that's it. Uh, really kind of like, you know, once you get into the afternoon, uh, trade in, in, in the U S they're, they're really the only ones that are participating, you know, Asia's out of the picture. They've already started their weekend. Uh, Europe started its weekend. And then, you know, basically as you get into the U S uh, afternoon, they've started to take their, uh, take the rest of the day off too. And the dust start thinning out. So, uh, really it's a, it's a one day trade, a half day trade. And the a way that I've approached this, and I've and I've done I've done studies on this in the past. This is something that historically uh, has worked. Is it's is basically a fade trade, 
Okay, so uh, it doesn't always work. Like nothing, nothing does, right? In the market, nothing always works. Okay, we, we we get sometimes we get a good you know result and we get the ideal scenario, and sometimes we don't, right? And we just we got to manage our risk accordingly, and and that's really what it comes down to. But uh, basically, the, what the fade trade is is that is that whatever the initial move is in the dollar, I'll look to go the other way. Now, uh, the, 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 what's happened in the last, so the last one we had, so last month was actually good in terms of that, right? We had this, we had this fade, we had this fade trade, right? Um, the data came in a little bit worse than expected and the dollar dropped initially which made sense on the surface, right? Uh, and then, and then it rallied, and it rallied uh, rather, rather hard. Okay, and it was one of those situations where it was just, it was a, it was a modest miss. Uh, they, they, they kind of kicked the dollar in a little bit, and then it had a nice, had a nice, uh, had a nice bounce. Now it didn't last very long. Okay. It didn't last very long. Uh, so basically what, just give me one second here. Okay, sorry about that. So basically, so here's here here was that, uh, here was actually that die. This is uh, looking at the US dollar index. We, we had this, I just got a question about the pound. Everybody's all excited about the pound, right? Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later. Uh, right now, I just want to kind of keep it, keep it focused on the NFP uh, situation coming up. Uh, this was, this was the day right here. This was the, the, this was on September 2nd. Number came out at one point. This daily bar was, was a big black bar, right? It was, a, it was a big down day, and, and then the market recovered. Okay, and, and the number came in a little lighter than expected, but it wasn't crazy, right? It was like it was like a, I think it was like maybe like a a thirty k miss. Okay, so today we're looking for what one seventy two? Is that what we're looking for? Right, one seventy two. So uh, basically, the way that I look at this is that as long as the is the deviation from the number isn't too big, so maybe twenty to thirty k on either side. Uh, or, you know, either a beat or miss is kind of a, a, a good range to look for this fade trade to happen. Now, if we get some crazy number where it blows out and it's like, it's like, you know, 172 and instead it comes in at like 270 or it comes in at 70, you know, that that's a situation uh, where it gets very one way and, and it, and it becomes more difficult. Now I, with that said, Okay, we'll talk about here in a second how the dollar is postured going into this number. Uh, that also can make a difference as to how this trade will work out and how I will view this trade going into it. But if you get a small deviation one way or another, that oftentimes that initial reaction is faded. Okay, and as we can see over here, this is a great example. Uh, it, it didn't last, but for that day, and then we ended up having uh, a sell-off, you know, commence on you know Sunday night into Monday and then Tuesday and 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 so on and uh, so it's really it's a short-term trade the prior two times uh, to this we had really great numbers right we had great numbers uh, in 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 August for July and July for June and uh, and so the numbers were considerably higher than expected and the dollar and the dollar responded accordingly, right? So it was a really big beat. So what I'm looking for today is A, I'm looking for either a small miss or a small beat and to go the other way, okay? Now, usually what happens is it takes a few minutes uh, for the, you know, for the initial reaction to happen. And then, and then what I oftentimes do is I'll look at a five minute bar. And once I start to see, you know, a reversal bar or some type of like green bar, if I'm looking to buy or a red bar, uh, if I'm looking to sell and then, you know, as the momentum kind of turns lower, um, let's see if we can even, let's see if we can even get a, uh, a five minute. We'll have to do some, uh, we'll have to do a lot of backtracking here. It's probably not going to work on this, uh, but I'm going to show you guys what I mean by, you know, so basically, so basically like 
you know, here this is the this is the pound rally. This is the or tank. So this is the rally on the on the pound. Uh, but you know, basically what what I look for in these situations is you know well, let's just like this is a much larger spike than what we're gonna get off of off of NFP, right? So uh we can't really but like let's just say that you know there was a good number and the, and the dollar spikes up you know looking at a five minute bar here and and then it starts to reverse okay uh in, in this case then you know you look to, to to go the other direction okay um and then and vice versa on the long side now let's talk about actually where we are and then we're going to talk about a couple other markets because uh, gold and silver are certainly interesting right now, given how, how, in you know how much they just got kicked in the other day, and that that selling has continued. We've seen some sell continued spillover, and I think a lot of people are turning very bearish, uh, just as a lot of people are turning very bullish on the dollar now. Uh, the one thing that I also take into consideration, and this is and before even you know having that this big spike, uh, you know when when last night. Uh, you had the pound fall out of bed for, for like six percent at one point. Uh, you know when when it when it hit the when it hit the skids, uh, you know it caused the dollar index to spike. It was it was literally like it was that was over in like minutes. Uh, you know what what exactly you know it was kind of like a flash crash is what it was. Uh, but even before we got to this right even before we got to today, we'd already had a really nice run up. Okay, we've already had a really nice run up in the dollar. Now, technically speaking, the dollar is is really, you know, it's it's broken out of it's broken out of this set of parallels here. It broke above this trend line that goes up here back off this this early year high. Uh, you know, it it's kind of done everything you know you've asked for it for it to to maybe move on higher. But here's the thing: in the near term. Okay, and that's why again, this is a near-term trade. This is a short-term trade. This isn't something that I'm going to be, you know, holding on to. And and you know, NFP is going to be the reason why the market completely reverses, and, and you know, or anything like that. But we've already, we were already extended, you know, before today's further extension. We were already getting extended. Um, of course, the the sterling situation makes it a little more. Uh, complicated uh, when just looking at the dollar, but we're going to take a look at the euro, which is my preferred uh, my preferred currency to actually trade NFP off of. But when you get these moves like this, right? So where you get the dollar, you know, all all pumped up into a number, or you know, even if it were to sell off into a number like this, like a big monthly number, the the biggest monthly number really, right? When you when you get this situation, what you have is you have a market that's already, you know, effectively pricing in a good outcome. Okay, it, you have a market that that and even if it's not necessarily pricing in, and let's just say there's some other reasons as to why the dollar is moving higher. Okay, uh, it, it it gets to a point where unless that number to sustain the rally in the short term, in order to sustain the rally in the short term. It's going to need something, you know, the catalyst is going to have to be bigger than than maybe like some 20 or 30K beat. Okay, maybe it's going to need to be like, you know, we're looking for 172. It's going to need to be like 250, 260. But, you know, now that we even got the dollar even more extended here, we're getting to the point where even a pretty sizable beat may not may not actually last. Okay, at this time, the, the risk has become skewed to the downside, right? So everybody's getting long dollars. So you have to think about it that way. Everybody's getting long dollars. And in the short term, we may have hit a little exhaustion point here. And and so if we get a small beat in NFP, it's like, eh, okay, whatever. You know, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, it, it, the, it, the market's already rallied and it's it, it's kind of a disappointment still. Okay, because because at this point, we've already got everybody long. So what what is it, you know, we're going to need something more than that to keep everybody long. And so as a result, what happens is ends up you getting, you'll start getting some selling after the initial little euphoric reaction. So that's something to keep in mind. And, and a lot of times, you know, you have this headline number, right? The headline number will be, you know, a beat or a miss. But then, you know, if, if you delve into the report, and I'm not going to delve into the report because I already know this is just kind of how it happens. Like, I don't need to, to, to get in there and start looking at, like, you know, specifics on wage inflation and participation rates and all that stuff. Uh, but then oftentimes, you know, later you'll look back and you'll go, oh, well, the end of, you know, the headline number was this. But then, 
then there wasn't maybe, you know, nothing else was all that great. So again, it comes down to like, it's kind of a disappointment overall, right? As opposed to where like, maybe it's like, you know, a big beat, a, revi a you know, a nice big upward revision from the month before. And then, you know, you get some nice wage inflation, like just basically this full on dollar bullish scenario. Uh, that, you know, that doesn't happen that often. Uh, and so that's why you'll get, you know, in these situations where you get a market that's already uh, extended, you get that kind of like you, you're, the market setting up itself up for a little bit of disappointment again in the very near term. It's nothing, you know, nothing that that would be, you know, a, a game changer. You're not going to see you're not going to see the dollar reverse and, and permanently on NFP. I mean, I'm not saying that the same day that that happens and it dollar reverses isn't couldn't coincide, but it won't be because of NFP. Okay, it's not it's not that big of a number. Um, there's still a lot of other variables. So again, dollars extended, uh, going into this small beat isn't really going to be enough. All right. Now on, on the flip side, you know, we get, we get a, we get a miss. Uh, that's not the preferred scenario. Although I'm going to tell you that if we get a miss, uh, I'm still going to look at it, you know, through the lens of, of, of trying to fade that move. Uh, but I don't think it's going to have maybe as much momentum, uh, as much of a reversal because, because again, you got to think the market's already all long dollars and then they get this disappointing news. You know, they really have a good reason to, to, to sell, but like, even then, even then you'll, you'll, you'll see that reversal happen. So it's really like, it's kind of a stupid trader thing. You know, that that's sometimes being, sometimes being, you know, just using dumb little tactics like this, uh, just knowing that that markets tend to to fade news uh, in the very short term is is really all like one needs to know, you know, as opposed to chasing it, you know. So if you were to just chase, as soon as the number comes down, it's good, and you're to buy it. It was bad. It was to sell it. Uh, over a long period of time of doing this, it hasn't worked. Uh, I've done back tests on this. Uh, I've I've traded it live. I'm doing this for for many years, uh, and I can tell you this is one of the more reliable strategies. You know, unfortunately, it comes around once a month. And not even every month do you get a good situation. There was two months in a row where uh, the, you had this one-way, you know, dollar move because the number was so above or, you know, so above expectations that you just had this one-way move. And, and so, you know, it was one of those things where, like, and then for another thing is if it doesn't happen in the first 30, right, the reversal doesn't happen in the first 30 minutes after, then, then basically, like, I just call it a day on the, you know, the trade. So, and, and there's no reason to be a hero and put on the trade and, and, and just keep, you know, fading and fading and fading. Like, that's why I wait for a turn, right? Wait for the, you know, wait for some type of, uh, turn in momentum, you know, and usually I look at a five minute, uh, chart for that and it can happen sometimes right away. Sometimes it can take 10 or 15 minutes or so to develop. Uh, so now, Getting into uh, my preferred vehicle uh, for doing for for initiating this trade is the euro. Okay, so the euro responds the best uh, longer term. Okay, now sometimes what you want to do is you want to look for maybe the strongest or the weakest currency. Uh, okay, you want to look at the strongest or weakest currency going into uh, into the number. So, you know, for example, if, if, if the Euro was the weakest of the, on the board, right. Amongst like Australian dollar, British pound, Kiwi, CAD, yen, you, you name it. Right. So if it was the weakest on the board, then that would be the one that, that I would look to sell. Uh, and conversely, if it was the strongest, it would be the one I'd be looked to buy if I was doing this fade trade. Right. So, and, and then the case where it's the weakest on the board, you know, if, if, it, if it rallies on kind of a bad uh, jobs number, then, you know, it should fade the fastest, okay, uh, and, and vice versa. But just overall keeping it simple, instead of even looking at that stuff, you know, if you stick with the euro, uh, you're going to have, you know, the most consistent results in terms of seeing it make a move following NFP. Uh, in a manner in which, you know, I've, I've just described here. 
because uh, sometimes you won't even see any real move happen in some of these other currencies. There's a lot of selling, but like I, there's no way I would I would touch the pound today on this event because it's just got too many other things going on with it. So like pound is going to be off the table. Like I'm not going to trade cable around this cable off the table <laughs> uh, for for this particular event. Now, what I was just talking about here. So so we've had we've had a little bit of selling going on in the euro, and the euro is coming into support. Okay, got this trend line going back to this very, very important uh, low here. This is this December 3rd when Draghi had really, really disappointed the market uh, and, and it sent the euro flying. Uh, so here we have this and which makes this this pivot here the even more important. Whenever you have an event that occurred around a pivot, then it's it's basically like. When you have an event like that, that that particular inflection point is very important. Uh, with that said, you know you could even draw this up a little bit higher, uh, and you could connect, you could connect this this low here, and then it'll cross through these, just under just above these lows. So we had another important event over here, right? Very important event. That was Brexit. So right now, what you have is the euro, basically trading around support. It's starting to break through these lows here, and we may even see a little. We may even see a little shoot through, uh, and it could still recover and close back above. In fact, that would almost, you know, be an ideal scenario, even from a from a little bit of a swing trade standpoint. Maybe into next week, is if we saw a, a shoot through and then a reversal holding this trend line. Uh, I like to see when support gets broken. We have horizontal support here as well. I like to see horizontal and trend line support get broken and then reverse and close back above. Again, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. It's just a scenario, but we are trading down towards some support here in the euro. So, with that said, uh, it's seeing some type of, uh, you know, dollar bullish, which is euro negative, right? You see something where it pushes the euro down. Well, it's got some price support there, right? And the dollars had this big, big rally. And really, this uh, this has not been, you know, this has not been much of a sell-off. You know, a lot of this has been has been cable driven, and then of course the spike uh, last night was all cable driven. But with that said, we have the euro here down around support, so that to me is intriguing from a standpoint of, oh, uh, you know what, jab the euro down on a, on a you know, maybe like 180, 190, 200k even uh, print, and then and then uh, you know all of a sudden they jab the euro down, you start to see it reverse, and you say, hey, there's support there. Uh, and you know, things are a little over down the dollar boom, you get that reversal. So that's, this is, this to me is kind of setting up like it could be a, a decent trade. Now, I'm not saying that, that we don't get some type of, you know, 250, 260 K print and it slams the Euro. And then, and then it's all you see on the five minute bars is just selling, 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 selling. And, and then at that point, like, you know, if the momentum doesn't turn around, we don't start to see a turnaround. Okay. You know, even if like, if you were to look at this as a five minute chart, you know, the, this, this right here just keeps turning to going low, 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 lower, and then it turns. Right. So like it's going lower, 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 lower turns. You know, it's, it's about looking for the turn, uh, as opposed to this is, this would be a great example here. It's just constantly like just bar after bar pretty much is not giving you any indication to get long. Okay, and then finally it has a nice sharp uh, spike, and then we rally. So like you gotta wait for that turn. You know, it's like over here. If you if you saw a nice five minute candle that looked like something like this, you know, something where we we jabbed higher, jab, you know, and then it pushed lower. You know, conversely, jabs lower, and then pushes back up. Uh, when you when you see that happen, okay, that's when you you know you can get an idea that okay momentum has turned here, and and we're likely to reverse. Uh, at that point, or more, more likely to reverse, and in which case, then you would put your stop below the day's low or below, or above the day's high, depending on what you know which direction you're at, and then that gives you like you know some risk parameters to work with, and then you know we can also th that way you know you know where where you should be getting out because because once it starts to turn, these things don't usually then make a you know they don't usually you know let's say the euro let's say the euro jabs down on a on a decent little dollar number and then starts to reverse and it starts working for like 10 or 15 minutes 
it doesn't it doesn't usually then then make a new lower low and then start to 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 work again okay it doesn't usually do that like so if it makes a new lower low uh the, it that's usually one of those times when like the market's telling you that it's going to keep going that direction it's not going to have that reversal okay so so once we turn you know and, and let's say then that that stop would be like maybe you know depending on the size of the move you know if we got a hundred point move lower you know and that stop might be 15 20 pips lower uh but that would be our line in the sand you know below the day's low and and basically you'd say okay you know if it goes below the day's low i'm out uh if not i'm gonna look to see if this thing can't reverse and and generally you know as a rule of thumb the target uh, is the, to get back to where we were prior to the number and oftentimes you know i'll let some go and it'll go above uh or below wherever the number actually you know whatever price level the number was right at 8 eight thirty new york twelve thirty gmt time wherever that price level was at that time uh it'll usually go even beyond that point but the initial price target is just for it to come full circle back to the original uh to where it started all right so take a look at gold so gold i mean this thing's getting killed right it's been down like i don't know what, eight days in a row so like here here's a situation where gold has been annihilated all right it's been annihilated it's very get it's getting very oversold so if we got a if we got a dollar you know bullish number right which is like you know helping supporting the idea that that the uh that the fed's going to raise rates uh in in december and we're not looking for anything here in november we got elections and stuff coming up remember that um then 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 that should be bearish for gold right but gold has just come from you know over thirteen hundred and forty dollars all the way down to twelve fifty in like eight sessions okay it's had a huge move so it's very extended in the short term so if we got a little bit of a a dollar bullish gold bearish number you, know, you can see it kick lower and then have a reversal and that's just in the short term because the market's become a little exhausted of the downside it's going to need a big catalyst to send it a lot lower okay now again if this thing came in the number came in crushing you know 270 280 something you know even 250 i guess you know something like that and we just saw nothing but momentum kick in and and, and more panic selling uh, because this is starting to get a little panicky in the short term, right? This is becoming like a flush move uh, very quickly. Uh, if we got some more selling in there, and and I wouldn't really call it a panic, all right? I mean, I, I, it's more of a we, – we had a flush through 1,300, but, I mean, we're not at a panic stage yet. Uh, but if we had some more aggressive selling then, you know, and, 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 and you know, you saw that there wasn't really any reversal in the dollar, and there was no reversal showing up, in, you know, on the five-minute bars – of, of gold then it would be like okay well you know then maybe we'll just let it go but the thing is, is this is setting up nicely for a a pop in the near term and we've got a big event coming up so this is kind of like lining up kind of nice all right so we have this 1250 which is which is a you know a psychological level as well as a real level uh this is an important level this was this big spike back here on brexit Okay, that was the day low was 1250. All right, so looking at 1250, uh, you know, I could see it kicking, kicking a little lower, uh, you know, trading the 1240s, maybe even the high 1230s, and then reversing, and then end up closing back above. This is something I could see. It's not a forecast. I'm not trying to predict this. I'm just saying that that we're oversold. We, we, we you know, we we've been selling off for days and days and days, and I mean, if we sell off again today, it'd be day number nine. And while, you know, a number of days up or down does not constitute overbought or oversold in of itself, it is a pretty good indication there's going to be at least a mean reversion coming pretty soon. So even if we didn't see, you know, even if today we saw gold break down and, you know, let's say they had the big number and, and, and gold didn't turn around as it was talking about in the first 20, 30 minutes of following the, the release, then we, you know, we could see. We could see some kind of bounce here then maybe coming uh, next week. Uh, silver, same thing. You know, silver is more of just like the high beta version. Uh, found some support over here. This is an area I talked about before as being, you know, if we broke this trend line, we were going to find some support around around the 12, uh, 17 mark, just a little above it. Uh, so this would be another one kicks down, and then we get a bounce, okay? 
Now, again, if we have a bad number, you know, we could see, you know, we still do have some momentum to the downside. Uh, you know, we'll see if sellers maybe still wouldn't want to try to step in and push this thing back lower using using a a bad number as an opportunity to uh, to dump their to dump their silver, gold, and 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 then counterwise uh, with a dollar. But you know, at this time, and again, this is the scenario that's setting up is that big down move into a key number. We kind of like to see that number be supportive to a certain extent. This trend right here, we'd like to see it be supportive, right? And then and then have the market start to reverse. And then basically in this situation, catch all the shorts, uh, you know, on the wrong side. Now I don't really do this with the, uh, so I don't really do this with indices. Okay, like I don't, I don't really do the fade trade so much with indices unless there's something interesting going on. Right now, there's really not a whole heck of a lot that is going on. Uh, it's still, we're still, you know, we're getting some pretty good daily intraday ranges, although those are starting to get a little bit tougher. Uh, maybe today we'll get a resolution out of this this triangle. I don't know. Uh, I don't know which way it's going to break. If we do break, we'd quickly find some support at this trend line coming up off the 2000. The early, or I'm sorry, the February 11th retest low. I want to say the 2011 low, but that's not correct. Uh, find some support quickly there. We also have some resistance then once we get to uh, record highs. Okay, so uh, looking at the indices, I'm going to stay away from that for NFP. Rarely ever trade that. Really focus on the euro, and, and the gold situation is intriguing. Uh, I may get involved in gold. Uh, depending on how it reacts, and uh, and it may get involved in euro and gold, but generally I like to keep it to the euro. Uh, and and those, you know, the euro and gold should should move uh, somewhat relatively in line. There'll be varying magnitudes uh, as to how that happens. All right, so I see there's there's a couple questions. Uh, I'm going to circle back around. Uh, I'm going to start with Clive. Uh, in your experience, is the GBP likely to test the low of 118 to 119 again soon? Thank you. Uh, thank you for patiently waiting uh, for my answer. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a good. That is a good question. Okay, because a lot of times what happens is you get the spike low. Um, you'll get the spike low, and then and then we'll see. Uh, we will see like a bounce and then we'll see when I say retest, I don't mean exactly to that low, but we'll see a retest, you know, somewhere down, uh, towards there. And then we'll, we'll recover. Um, my suspicion is that this could, you know, blame like whatever we want to say caused it. Okay. Whether it was, you know, some say it was a fat finger, whether it was just, uh, you know, there was just heavy selling at a very inopportune time, like market liquidity was low. Uh, these types of things, in my experience, regardless of how they happen, tend to be markers uh, and, and, and tend, to, tend to act as turning points. So I'm really watching this closely now. Uh, and, and But one of the ways that this will ha can happen is you get this initial bounce, you'll kind of get a drift back lower and then the market won't be able to to move any lower and then you'll get it you'll get a bounce so that's a good question uh is is it likely to retest uh again soon yeah there, there's certainly that possibility and of course if it broke below there then we'd have you know a whole nother situation on our hands but you know i don't know that it necessarily will get all the way back down to that low print uh but again certainly could retest and and if it retested, you know, in the form of even coming, you know, maybe 100, 200 points above that and started to turn higher, uh, that may be all it needs in order for it to turn back around. Amir asks, do you look at SSI readings of the U.S. dollar or the Euro USD? Um, I look at them when things get extreme, uh, but not like, you know, I don't look at them every day. Um, I try to keep my... You know, I try to keep data points as as, uh, as minimal as possible, as you can see from my from my naked charts uh, that have a few lines on them. I've decided to put some different colors on here just so they look a little prettier. Uh, 
and, and, and not so bland. Otherwise, it'd just all be black and white. Uh, but SSI, you know, I, I like to look at it at extremes. Okay, we, we, we've, we've been at, we've seen some extremes uh, in regards to uh, cable lately, right? Like, like his, like extremes that, that we haven't seen in years and actually have never seen, uh, you know, in terms of the, the SSI they're getting to a point where, you know, SSI was at like, I don't know, I think it was six uh, for, for the pound. Now it's at 2.54. What do you think happened there? Flush. Uh, had a lot of had a lot of buyers quickly uh, flushed out of the market. So that's another thing. You know, you see a flush out of the market like this. This this flushed out a, a lot of a lot of individuals. Um, and and so that's why I'm also looking at this as maybe being a very important low here. Uh, coming up in cable where we could get a nice big tradable rally. Mayor also says, if we get a good number, that means dollar rate hike is more probable. USD strengthens. If number is bad, then we are in risk aversion. And again, the USD strengthen. Is that right? Oh, I don't, you know what? I don't know. Um, I don't know if you can really draw conclusions uh, as linearly as, as that, perhaps, um, in terms of... Uh, you know, NFP, like, I mean, really, NFP right now, as long as this thing doesn't come in at, like, zero, uh, as long as it's, like, fairly stable, in terms of, of a rate hike, you know, the Fed still has, it still has a, a, a its, its case is still supported as we head towards December. And again, we have the elections coming up and, and uh, in the U.S. And so... You know, it's it's unlikely they're going to do anything around election time, right? Uh, so we're looking at December. I I don't you know I don't really foresee unless we have some just really big deviation, which is possible. Uh, I don't really see that it's going to change the view uh, in a in a very uh, meaningful or material way in terms of how you know Fed funds are pricing it and whatnot. Now, with that said, again, you know, this a very in the very short term, you know, so so it could be all you, know, you can look at this stuff as this, this data, and you could say to yourself, well, you know, if we have a strong NFP, that means rates, you know, it's it's easy to draw those conclusions and be like, oh well, that means that the dollar should go higher. But again, as we were talking about, you know, we can even look at uh, another one that that doesn't have quite the weighting. So the U.S. dollar index that we were just looking at earlier, that has 25% of uh, pound, uh, euro, Aussie, and yen. So it's very easily influenced by each one of them, whereas uh, the U.S. dollar index is not so much. Uh, and if we look at this, this actually this is a chart that I, I not long ago had, had drawn up. And uh, we've kind of had a little breakout here uh, in, in the dollar index. Uh, but it's it's had a nice rally into today's uh, into today's number. So one of the things I'm looking for, and, it, and if we didn't have that that pound situation, you know I don't know where we'd be trading at right now. We'd probably be trading closer back to this trend line. But we've had a rally into this, so you know I I kind of see this as being an opportunity uh, where you know if we don't have like some blowout number again, the market the market may be disappointed. You know, if we have, if we beat by like say 20K or so, and again, there's other facets to the jobs report besides just NFP. So that's the headline number that everybody reacts to. But then there's, you know, there's, they, they look for signs of wage inflation, right? So via the average hourly earnings, uh, you know, there's participation rate, unemployment rate, not really, you know, it's not really something that, that stands out too much, but there's revisions to the prior month in the NFP number. So there, it, it's a little more complicated than just the headline number, but the headline number is where the market really kind of reacts, right? Um, which is another reason that, that can support the, the, the idea of why these things reverse is because, you know, the market reacts to the headline numbers, has a head fake, okay? You know, that's, that's kind of, you know, in a way, it's kind of the you can look at it as, as, you know, there's a headline number and then everybody realizes, oh, well, it's not as wonderful. All right. I don't really think that deeply because I just know that in general, uh, over the years, again, you know, and unfortunately it's only once a month, uh, NFP, 
which is another reason though why it, it is such an important number it only, is only once a month but uh it it, it more often than times than not uh, will have a reversal of some sort uh off the headline number and when you get a a, ra a dollar rally and you get a support you know you get a, a, a maybe a little bit of a b or an inline number you may see the dollar pop yeah that's great for expect you know interest rate expectations and whatnot but you know what in the short term you know that's a macro thing but in the short term uh, the dot, you know, the markets become a little exhausted. The upside and maybe needs a bigger catalyst in order to send it higher. And that's why you'll see these kind of reversals after you, you know, basically you're like, basically you're you're buying the rumor, selling the news in this case with the dollar. Yeah, no problem, Clive. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Says he's uh, Brit currently living in a hurricane in Daytona Beach. Yeah, uh, that's that's no good. Hope everything's all right. You got some, you got some power down there right now, so should be thankful for that. Um, so you know, getting getting at the the bottom line of this whole thing uh, is that is that today the dollar is extended into NFP. Just to summarize, a good number, but not a great number. Looks like an opportunity for the market to sell. Uh, again, waiting for that turn of momentum following the number. If a bad number comes out, then you know, you're just going to see. You know that, that would be one of those times where if a bad number came out, maybe we don't see uh, the dollar come down and then quickly reverse. But it, again, it could because, because it's coming back into... You know, so it's kind of like it's about the initial direction. So, so if we have a kind of a semi-weak number, you know, the, will buyers look at that as an opportunity to buy the dip? Okay, and and it's it's almost like you know I'm saying, I'm almost saying like it could go up, it could go down, but like it depends on what the first move is. So if it goes up, then then I'm looking to reverse because a lot of times that's what, that's which what happens. Okay, that's the the explanation behind it is that is that the they need more in order to get the in order to get the dollar higher. So it's a reactive stance. It's not a predictive stance. And then conversely, if the dollar comes down on a slightly weaker number, buyers could step in and look at it as an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? This is, this is just a temporary little thing. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's not like the number came in, at, you know, at, at a negative or anything, and it could start to reverse. So the bottom line is. Is it? But instead of trying to figure all that out, just watching the just watching the, the the price action, you know, in the very short term on the five minute chart, does it does does the market react to the upside then start to to roll over? Does it react to the downside and start to turn back up? Okay, it's a very simple. Uh, you know, I don't mean to oversimplify it, but that's really about as 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 complicated as I get. And w given that the dollar's made such a big move. I think it's one of those situations where it certainly is intriguing. And again, getting back to gold, I mean, gold just got really beat up here. So if we have a if we have a dollar bullish number, will that, will that could maybe this be an exhaustion move? And it's kind of like a sell the in this case it'd be sell the rumor by the news, right? Or you know if the market starts to bounce and then it starts to roll over, you know the the short sellers and longs who want to get out of this thing may view that as an opportunity to say, hey, you know what, the the, the, the trend is down and, and the, the you know, I want to get out. And so then that could also cause it to fade to the other side. So that's why I don't like to get too like, okay, you know what, the, but, so the game plan is, you know, I have a game plan to, to which scenario happens. Okay, and that's the key, having that game plan and then reacting to it. Okay, if 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 none of if if the number comes in line and and then there's just like this real small move and then it's just nothing really big, you know, start you know there's no real like you know knee jerk higher, knee jerk lower uh, type play, then then it won't do anything. And that and that's also happened in recent months where you just kind of sit there and you're like, okay, well that was disappointing. Who cares? Let's go enjoy the weekend. Raman asks, what is your opinion on oil? Uh, I'm going to tell you my opinion on oil. I think oil I think oil is getting overdone. Okay, 
and I think it's I think it's at the one of those points here where uh, it's definitely at an inflection point. Okay, like we're getting up here towards what could be. So we have this 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 possible inverse head and shoulders has become a popular theme uh, that I've seen out there, uh, and. I could see oil, you know, so then we also have this peak over here and then, you know, you have the neckline and, and, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a level over here, uh, and we're, we're getting extended. This is one where oil to me, uh, is becoming more of a sale than a buy, you know, and, uh, and maybe big picture it'll pull off and it'll become a buy, but in the, in the near term, we're getting into some pretty big levels up here. Um, I'm even going to get down here to, let me get to an even shorter term chart because I noticed this developing the other day. So here's, here's how I'm looking at oil and here's how I'm playing oil. It's at an area, right? That I'm, I'm viewing as being an area of interest to sell. So, but I need more than that, right? I need a turn of momentum. I need something to tell me that it's no longer headed higher. Because right now, if you look at the hourly chart, right, it's not exact, it's not perfect, but you have a pretty nice channel developing, okay? And we have higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, et cetera, et cetera. So we need the sequence to be broken. All right, we need the sequence to be broken. And then once the sequence is broken uh, and we break basically below this lower channel, at least now it tilts, it tilts it in favor of, of sellers. Okay. Now, whether it breaks this lower line and just tanks or whether it, you know, maybe comes down, bounces and then fails uh, this until this is broken, then, then there's no need to be a seller in my opinion. Okay. Cause just all you're doing is, is, is shorting into an uptrend. And so far, you know, if you shorted into this uptrend, yeah, you've had pullbacks, but that's all they've been to. And it's amounted to a push higher. But given that we're in a zone where, you know, it looks like sellers could step in, I like this one uh, to the downside, given that it can break this bullish trend structure. Guess says, what will affect, what will, what effect will that have on dollar cad and on the NFP? Um, uh, oil, referring to oil. Uh, well, dollar CAD, you know, is interestingly like so. Dollar CAD has been, uh, yeah, dollar CAD has been a a perplexing one for a lot of people. Cause here's the thing: there's two sides of the coin. Dollar's been strong, oil's been strong. Okay, and so that's why dollar CAD has been, uh, has been the way that it has. Okay, cause because it, it, theoretically, right, oil rallies like that, dollar CAD should should already be selling off as as CAD strengthens, right? Because it's good, oil higher oil prices. But the dollar's been strong. So it's caught between being, you know, a commodity commodity pair, right? And it's a dollar, you know, it's a dollar pair at the same time. So, you know, this one, this is a little bit of a tough read. I think this is throwing people for a loop. Uh that that you have this oil rally dollar cad rally going on at the same time uh you know and and you've got you know you've got resistance right here so just looking at this technically in the short term uh you know i certainly don't i don't you know it's a real simple rule of thumb uh, i don't buy resistance just as i don't short support okay so right now i don't view dollar cad as a buy uh now it'll be interesting to see you know if oil pulls off is is dollar cad is that going to be a a boon for dollar cad well we'll have to see how the dollar reacts right which one if if the dollar and it's possible the dollar and oil both pull off i mean they've been going up together right why couldn't they pull off together you know uh in that case then you know that doesn't really that kind of leaves dollar cad neither here nor there so it'll it'll be interesting to see which side wins out you know just longer term you know, looking at a longer term of this, I still, you know, I still view this as being a corrective uh, following this down move, but I'm not, I'm not willing to go out on a limb and say that that's what's, you know, 
I'm not saying that it that it is going to break down because it hasn't given us indication yet that it is. It would really need to trade like you know on the 126, 127 uh, before you could consider that maybe as a corrective move. So we'll have to wait on that. But yeah, Dollar Cat is certainly an interesting one. So that was it's a good question. And if in, in regards to NFP, uh, I don't trade Dollar Cat. I don't really trade oil. You know, in terms of like because the oil, you know, oil's a is a risk asset, but then at the same time. You've got the dollar dynamic. Um, try to just keep it simple. Really just look at what I, I, I know is going to be influenced on a consistent basis, and that's the euro. Uh, you know, And then also like gold there, I was, as I was talking about before. So NFP and oil, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's, I mean, like I said, dollar's been going up, oil's been going up. And here's the thing. It's, it's okay to not, like, if you not have an, a good idea or a good opinion, uh, as long as then you stay away from that particular situation, because if you don't have a good feel for it, uh, and I don't have a good feel for it right now, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to tell you how I think that one's gonna play out. Uh, so sometimes just saying I don't know is is a good opinion of itself. Mir says so the path of least resistance in the USD is down in your opinion. Uh, well. No, right now the the short term path of least resistance is up. Okay, I mean it's it, because it's been rallying. Um, I think what and, and we should and then okay and then I'll further on and we should look for pound dollar and gold upside rally if no surprise. Um, so okay, so let me just be clear. And I under, I understand where you're, what you're going with that, and and, and I, I can see where maybe. It could be construed one of two ways. Uh, the path of least resistance is is up, okay, because that's which way the dollar is headed. I think what you're you're saying is that you're interpreting it as when I say that the dollar uh, is due for a pullback, um, that's the path of least resistance. Uh, I mean, if you look at it, the path of least resistance is higher, right, right now. But you know, when you get these again, when you get these extended dollar moves uh into into a number it it means that in order to maintain that path of least resistance okay in order to maintain that uh maybe it's going to need some really good data okay it's going to need something it's going to need it needs to be fed okay you just think of it like it's a it's a growing animal okay and as the animal gets bigger it needs more food you know and that's basically what a rally is you know it's just a swelling of uh Raman says, thanks, man. No problem. Uh, it, it, it's like a, it's like an animal, right? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It needs more food. Well, NFPs could be like that, right? It needs more food. You got to feed it more. So it's going to need this big number to sustain this current move. All right. It doesn't get that big number. You know, yeah, you may get that little initial pop because, hey, you know what? It's a, it's a good number. Uh, that's what the dollar is supposed to do. And then it'll reverse because it doesn't, you know, it's not enough. It, it's, it hasn't been fed enough. It needs more. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> see, this is where, like, I just like to keep it simple. At the same time, you could also look at it through this lens. And that's why you got to watch the price action after the after it comes out. you got to make sure, you know, you got to watch, you know, does the dollar rally and then stall and start to roll over? Or does the dollar just take off, take off, take off, take off? And usually, you know, looking at a five-minute chart, you can see that. And then again, it should start to fade within the first few minutes no longer than a half an hour so if that time horizon gets expired then you know the dollar maybe is just going to keep on going okay but it's probably going to need a pretty big number at this point to sustain this current move all right and and on, conversely if the number's not that great but it's like it's not horrible okay it's maybe like you know they're looking for 172 it's like 140 or something 150 you know it's not terrible all right, it's even 130. It's not something that's like catastrophic. Then you know, you'll see the dollar pull off, and then we'll see, we'll see how the market reacts. Are they going to come in? Are they going to buy and look at that as as a as a chance to join the path of least resistance? Okay, are they going to look to 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 buy the dip? And we'll know because you know the dollar would start to dip, and then it would start to turn around, and then and it, once it starts to turn around, you know. 
if, if that's the case, then we'll see momentum then turn hard to the upside. So, you know, you got to think about this not only as like a scenario of fading the number as being a, a, a good likely scenario, but also from a risk reward standpoint, because as I was saying earlier, once the market starts to turn that high or low, depending on which way it goes, that high or low is can be used as your stop. Because what will happen is, is that you'll get a nice big five minute bar turn the other way. And and if it's a nice strong turnaround, you won't see that low be breached or that high be breached if in fact that fade trade is going to work. Okay, that's that's kind of the general rule of thumb there. If it does, then you've got a chance of that being one of those times where you know the, the move just keeps extending and we don't get a reversal. I hope that kind of helped clarify on that. And is in regard in regards to in regards to cable, because uh, you also ask about that. Um, I, I'm staying away from that one, but I do think that we're at a point here. I mean, you know, we're at a point where uh, you know, this is a flush. This is getting into flush territory. Okay, and I, and, and regardless of you know whatever they they want to say. All right, when we see moves like this, even if it's, you know, because of just low liquidity and it was just an awful time, uh, I mean, the, the time that it happened, there's a lot of, low, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of liquidity, okay? It, it, it happened in, you know, in, in early, early hours Asia, okay? That's, that's a low liquidity time, okay? That's every day, uh, whether it was a fat finger, you know, it, the, these events happen and they usually happen after after a big move and after you know the markets become very polarized uh, and and that's what's happening here so we've seen it in dollar yen before uh, during Asia which is a little more expected actually you'll see it like like you know I've seen it before like very late US early Asia which again is you know roll over time and it's, it's a thin time uh, but you know, obviously, this happening with a pound, you know, it's you were talking about a, you know, at that time it was it was well into the evening in London. Okay, there was the trading desks were you know thinned out. Uh, there wasn't really anybody on the U.S. desk, and Asia was just kind of waking up. So it was a thin time. Uh, but still, these types of events, you know, oftentimes will mark uh, an important intermediate term low or even at least just a short term you know i it very much would not surprise me to see us get back up to the 128 129 handle uh and then not too distant future if not better than that so i'm definitely going to keep an eye on this uh as we move forward and next week we'll talk a little bit more about it. we'll have a few more days in between but we'll talk a little bit more about that on wednesday Okay, uh, if, if there's no more questions, I'm going to uh, gonna close down the room. It's been a good solid hour. And I've got to let some other people, uh, got to let some other people take over on the, on the feed. <laughs> so again, I'll be back here. Uh, everybody, uh, again, you know, keep it tight. NFPs. You know, don't go and don't go and risk the world on it, okay? But there can be a good little trading opportunity in there uh, for those who like to who, who like to get in there and do some day trading. Uh, NFP can present some good opportunity. Uh, always be mindful of your risk, and uh, you know, best of luck on that. And we will be back here again uh, next week, Wednesday, same time, 9 GMT time. And we'll do it all over again. We'll we'll take a look at what you know what happened post NFP. We can analyze that a little bit, uh, and we can go from there. Uh, and we'll look at some other setups. Alfred, oh, this this one right here. I'll take this question. Alfred says, "What about Aussie yen? What about Aussie yen?" <laughs> it's not one that I've looked at a lot lately. As you can see, I have some old markings on this chart. Uh, I have to kind of freshen it up there for a little bit as to what I have. Uh, on my other platform, uh, Aussie yen is that some resistance right now? Uh, I find this to be a very difficult thing to get a, a to to get a good uh, feel for, um, generally speaking, which is why I'm not really paying so much attention to it. Uh, if it got to this trend line, 
All right, if we got this trend line, which looks a little better on the weekly, uh, which is where it actually really started. But uh, that would be a, a, certainly an area of interest to, to look to sell, but we have a long ways to get to there. Uh, Aussie yen right now to me is is tough. All right, it's it's tough because you've got Aussie going down. You've got, you know, you've got, you know, you've got yen going down, but they're kind of doing so like, like there's not a real whole lot of continuity here. I mean, we've had like a decent little bounce here, uh, but it's taken it's taken some time. You know, overall, I, I give it the benefit of the doubt, but it does need to clear this pivot back here uh, over 79. Uh, form, formed on September 6th, but right now it's kind of holding out, it's hanging out, right? And uh, you know we'll know more later today after we see how, what happens with NFP. But I, I really don't have a good feel for it, so sorry. I, I just I'm not gonna go out on a limb and and just give an answer to give an answer. But uh, you know right now it is at resistance, like and and so you know if it were to if we were to make a pullback. And then break on through resistance. Then I could see maybe clearing up here towards this trend line. But at this time, I don't have a real good feel on it. And I try not to. I try, you know, somebody will ask me about something, and you know, and I, and I know everybody wants an answer uh, as to what my thought is or what my opinion is. And and uh, sometimes they say, you know, I don't really have one, and that is my that is my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> is I don't have one I don't know you know and and, uh, and I just say you know I don't know but we could talk about this market where I think I I think I have a better idea so I, I try not to give you guys any fluff or anything like that uh, and just give you shoot you out an answer just to uh, just to appease you uh, if, if I don't really know have a good idea I don't have a good idea and that's okay because we don't you know we don't we don't have you know somebody may have a great feel on this one you know, my experience, you know, I'll look at something and somebody will be like so confident. I'll be like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and vice versa, you know, and I'll, they'll, I'll be looking at something and be like, oh my God, don't you see it? Don't you see it? And they'll be like, no. I'll be like, really? And they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> so there's my answer, Alfred. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'm going to close down the room now. Um, and But again, be back here next week. And so you guys can sign up, uh, come join me if you want to follow me on Twitter. I got my Twitter handle over here at Paul Robinson FX. You can email me personally at probinson at fxcm.com if you've got any uh, questions or maybe something I didn't get to today. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, email. Uh, I'll be talking to you guys next week. Thanks for the questions and thanks for your attendance. And good luck today trading NFP.